Thank you, Amanda. Hello, everyone, and welcome today to our latest masterclass webinar. As Amanda mentioned, I'm Kevin Kazmaier, Vice President of Channel Development here at TradeCentric, and I'm looking forward to today's session because I'm excited to be joined by such an iconic brand and our special guest representing that brand. Uh, welcome, Carrie, and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Kevin, and uh, for for the audience, thank you for taking the time this afternoon to attend this event. Carrie Goldman, Senior Director of Enterprise B2B, but what does that mean? In summary, I oversee sales and operations for the 1-800-Flowers Enterprise for our business customers. Um, just a quick understanding of my experience over five years in this channel. Most of my history has come into from the technology channel, working for some very large technology businesses, uh, and really everything that I got excited about joining the 1-800-Flowers brand was this drive towards automation and technology. Um, so looking forward to it. Looking forward to telling our story, Kevin. Awesome. Well, thanks again. Glad you could join us. So um, let's just talk a little bit about what we're going to cover today. So I'm sure you're all aware of the 1-800-Flowers brand, and you probably most likely used uh, one of their brands in your personal life today. Uh, but in today's session, we're actually going to dive into how they show up in B2B, and more specifically around employee gifting and e-procurement. So Carrie's going to spend some time today walking us through how e-procurement integration and connected commerce has helped drive more efficiencies and growth in B2B. And we're also gonna dive a little deeper into some of those enhancements that they've uh, promoted to support their e-procurement customers. So at the end, we're gonna open it up for Q&A, but please don't wait until then to offer up your questions. Feel free to enter them at any time in the Q&A section, post them to the queue, and we'll read them towards the end. So Carrie, you know, as I mentioned, you know, we all know 1-800-Flowers in our personal life. Why don't you take us a little through a little background on, you know, how does how does 1-800-Flowers show up in the B2B world? Yeah, I think that's a great question to, to ask, Kevin. And when we look at organizations and businesses who engage with the business gifting team at 1-800-Flowers, we'll talk a little bit about our brands, um, which ends up being the first component. But uh, really, when we look at this, it's it's all about how can we help businesses really help automate, look at their look at our solutions, tailor our solutions to the requirements of corporations who are looking to standardize on gifting, right? And then it becomes how do I leverage this? How do I leverage personalized gifts? How do I leverage floral and our other brands to help our customers? engage with their employees, engage with their customers and partners. And we'll talk a little bit about it later, but this is all about how can we help our customers really deliver smiles each and every day. Excellent. So as I mentioned, includes a lot of brands. You wanna like dive a little bit into yeah, what, so what those brands include? Yeah, I, I think great, great question, right? And so it's always, I bring the slide up because it's often the key question of, oh, I didn't know, right? And of course, the 1-800-Flowers brand is iconic, but to many of our clients, Harry and David, 1-800-Flowers and Personalization Mall are really what we call our flag flagship brands, right? They, they carry the majority of the functional operating businesses below, but when we talk about an enterprise gifting solution, it's about helping our customers and clients with an enterprise solution that allows you to not only leverage flowers, which are often for lifetime events at work, right? Sympathy, get well, new baby, uh, but really begin to leverage these other brands for gifting, right? Harry and David, iconic during holidays for gifting and everybody knows the Harry and David pairs or many of you know the Harry and David pairs, but as you can see, it gets far deeper than that from not only our product brands, including Moose Munch, Cheryl, Sherry's, uh, Barry's, but really we start getting into technology solutions, what we call smart gift. Um, and on the bottom, we actually have a whole events organization that helps companies Perform, or we help those organizations connect with their employees through virtual events. The brand is called Alice's Table. 
Excellent. Excellent. So I have a question at the end that I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to throw you a little curve and I'm going to ask you a question based on this slide. So remember that, right? But let's just talk about why we're here, right? And, and a lot of that you talked around is about employee gifting. So tell us a little bit about, you know, why do companies invest in employee gifting and why 1-800-Flowers? Yeah, I think it's a, you know, we're, we, we almost can go into the whole story, right, of, of 1-800-Flowers and all of you can read the slides. I'm not going to sit here and regurgitate what's what's on on these slides. But when we look at the occasions that we support, that businesses reach out to us, um, first and foremost, yes, it starts with recognition of lifetime events at work, right? Sympathy, get well, new baby. I need to send flowers out to to an employee. But really, that ties into employee retention and engagement, right? We look at our business of helping customers engage with their employees and their clients, making an employee feel valued, making really it, it boosts morale, right? Driving increases of tenure to our employees, but really critical in this is job satisfaction. So as we begin to do that and create a sense of belonging with our technologies, we provide this ability to boost that what I would call retention and engagement. Surprise and delight and engage, really, again, critical to, to our story and our brands, right? Uh, again, this is about delivering smiles deep in every, deeply within an organization, satisfying, having people walk away entirely satisfied with their experience, whether I'm giving a gift or whether I'm accepting a gift. And really, it's about how do we create that memorable moment whether it's by the selection of choice in the gift or sending out a gift to, again, surprise and delight. This has continued to grow. It became very, very apparent that if we look at the history going back to 2020, when we were all dealing with COVID and all of us were working at home um, and not in the office, it was really about how do I make sure I'm staying engaged with my employees? And that has continued moving forward, not slowed down. Well, that's, that's great. I like, I like the whole concept <laughs> around delivering smiles, but to that point, right, this has really increased more and more over the last three, four years, right? And you, know, you talk about how this employee gifting is really growing and now it's showing up more because more companies want to focus on, on their employees. So it's now more relevant in the B2B space. Yeah, it is. And and look, Kevin, right, as we look over the years, right, and, and often this started with some very large financial institutions or, or lending institutions uh, with 400,000 employees or 300,000 employees that were looking for uh, the ways to not only can we recognize those employees, but again, right, it's gone down into smaller organizations, 25 employee organizations, that look at how can I leverage a partner who has the entire reach in the United States with over 5,000 florists, but really with our brands and distribution capabilities, being able to deliver products same day, whether it's our chocolate covered strawberries, or again, floral, or some of our other products like gift baskets that literally we can deliver products within the same day throughout the majority of the United States. Everything that we send is literally sent within a two-day period of time, often overnight. That's great. So with this offering, right, and and everything that you're doing, there has to be technology behind it. So can you walk us through a little bit about your evolution from the e-com side of things? Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's, it's a great question, right? Growing up in the technology industry, as many of us have, in our careers, right? 1-800-Flowers started with its own unique business gifting website or e-commerce site. Today, it still exists. It's still back-ended by what we would call Adobe's Magento platform. Um, but really the evolution as we look at commerce overall for business to business is, yes, we still have a subset of our clients who just literally will sign up, go into the platform, enter their orders, move forward. Uh, but really it's driven in corporate America to this e-procurement integration and preset approvals, right? E-procurement integration, not only 
we partner with Trade Centric, which is our partner on this. Uh, but really, it's about how do we add again efficiencies, customers punch outs through purchase orders, cost centers, invoicing through CXML, all of the necessary components that our clients are looking for in order to automate the process and getting out of what we would call the old fashioned world of pull out my credit card and expense the the transaction. As we know in the expense model of if I use my credit card to order flowers or a Harry and David gift box, that cost of $80 or $70 for the flowers, sure it's there, but the cost to the corporation every time that a travel and expense or a t and &E expense is created, it's $52, $53, depending on the average that you wanna look at. So by default, we start automating the process, reducing costs for our clients. And then how do we start integrating preset approvals, right? And implementing within a punch out environment, again, whether it's Coupa, Reba, Birch Street, on and on and on, um, not only do you have the workflows that we can support for our customers, um, but really this is about approvals, timeliness, uh, and really driving what we would call bulk gifting, simplifying that process to make it easier to gift from one person for a specific occasion and event to literally 10,000 employees in an organization that can be done within minutes. So you've come a, a long way in a short period of time to focus on a lot for your customers, but I really want to focus on that that middle step, right? Or you know, let's let's double click into e procurement integration for a second. Sure. Yeah. So the first thing that comes to mind for me really is that a lot of people say programs like this are usually done outside of of a of a normal system. You just referenced it, right? Some people use a a, a P card. Some people will say it's easier for me just to make a phone call. And others will tell you that only true indirect spend should be routed through e-procurement or on a punch out site, all right, should be automated. Now, I, I could debate that because I have we have customers today that sell direct, indirect services, what have you. They they all are routing through some type of, of e-procurement or connected commerce integration. But tell me a little bit about what is driving the need for these solutions with your buyers. Yeah, so I talked a little bit about it um, with with the credit card management of expenses. But when we really look at the streamlining process, uh, it, it's all about how can we automate the process, help our clients with their workflows to effectively do commerce and do business in the most efficient way possible, right? As we look at this, this is an indirect expense in most organizations when we look at flowers and being able to incorporate this idea and strategy of indirect spend and being able to manage it through procurement process and platform, not only does it add the efficiencies of being able to deliver and giving the communications and invoicing, but it's also the back end, right? And when I say the back end, that means the workflows are, are appropriately managed the information on transactions and orders and uh, my delivery, right? Because so much of what we do is timely. It's literally about if I have to send flowers to a funeral home uh, tomorrow and I do it through e-procurement, literally, right? I'm getting those notices, multiple notices of where that journey is um, for that delivery for the client. So again, it's, it's about leveraging what has traditionally been done in a standard world, but bringing in and tying in integration, which means that the, what I'll call the finance suite becomes incredibly happy with the ability to account for, like it or not, every dollar that's spent in an expense month. Okay. So we, we've been talking a little bit about, you know, this, this e-procurement integration and, and using different systems and platforms and making the connections, but I want to take a, a a quick minute to kind of level set with our audience because you know we've been throwing around these kinds of terms punch out e procurement integration connected commerce. Let's just talk real quick high level. How does it work? So you know when it comes to connected commerce, connected commerce is really all about meeting your customers where they want to purchase. So like Carrie said, they want to contain it within some sort of platform, some sort of spend management system, an e procurement system, Coupa, Ariba, Birch Street, what have you, right? That, that customer needs to transact in a system. 
And so the way to connect to that system starts off with something called punch out, which is really a way for buyers to connect to a supplier's e-commerce catalog that allows them to search and browse, see inventory, their custom pricing, and return those types of products back to a requisition within their own system. At that point, you know, when they have that requisition, they now want to create a purchase order. So adding purchase order and invoice automation to that process, it really creates the, the trifecta of essential solutions that are necessary to remove as much friction from this process as much as possible, right? So really, this is where the real value of integration comes into play. And as a supplier, you want to automate as much as possible. You want to remove the manual interventions, the costs associated with entering a purchase order by being able to accept electronic purchase orders, have them seamlessly drop into your back end, and be able to fulfill orders with your customers. And at the same time, uh, by offering an electronic invoice, which Carrie referenced as well, right, be able to re re offer that, that CXML invoice, that electronic invoice back to your buyer, it enables them to reconcile and approve that invoice faster, reducing exception rates and lessening resources, right, and, and reducing that resource time. And ultimately, it speeds up the time it takes you to get paid, right? So it shortens your DSO, it improves the customer's relationship on a whole. So basically connected commerce creates processes that increase visibility, accessible for all, or it's accessible for all your customers. It provides better controls, it eliminates errors, and it drives cost savings for both sides. So that was a lot, Carrie, and I felt like, you know, I got up yeah, on my no. toolbox Ka and, and talked, right? a lot, and, you know, when we think about connected commerce, not only is it all the factors and facets that you've identified, that when we start peeling the onion, so to speak, right, you take a deeper look into it, um, it's it's really about simplifying and automation, right? And and simplifying, yes, of course, we want to get paid as 1-800-Flowers faster. Um, but honestly, credit cards are the fastest way that we could be paid, right? That's instantaneously. But the reality is, is this reduces the error cycles that occur at a, at a business level, um, which of course means greater satisfaction to our user community and our customers uh, and, and literally the scale of it. When we start talking about the scale of connected commerce, um, leveraging Adobe, leveraging really our security. So we haven't talked about security too much, um, but security is a critical component and important part of our platforms and our technologies to today to protect uh, and enforce, right? Uh, PII and that information, but uh, again, by connecting, we eliminate the credit card component, which which is rife with potential fraud, number one. But number two, it's about ensuring from a secure standpoint of view that each and every transaction is delivered um, to that end user when it's supposed to be delivered in an effective means. And then, of course, in the back end, again, we're talking about that order, that transmission, that invoice is created via CXML the user who had to place that order for sympathy or whatever it might be, literally they're out of the loop, right? At that point, they're completely out of the loop. Excellent. And that's the good thing. Yeah, they no. Do what that, they're supposed to do. Yes, exactly. They can focus on, on their regular tasks and be on with their day. So, you know, thinking of that and the efficiency it drives for your customers, it has to drive some efficiencies within your organization as well. So, you know, what is the value of, of integration to the 1-800-Flowers organization as a whole? And can you share us a little bit of examples of maybe some, some how it's worked with your customers? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. And interesting, right? One of the attendees actually raised a question, Kevin, that if you don't mind, I'm just going to uh, approach it and address it. Um, one of those questions revolved around how long does it take to get onboarded to an integration program? Um, and, and I think it is really important to understand that we typically have an integration take approximately three to four weeks 
Um, that can be sped up. Often it's not because of everyone in the client organization that has to sign off and ensure. But from our world, an integration is really supposed to be as effective and as efficient as possible. From onboarding, we have a project manager who addresses it, who's there to ensure a successful onboarding and implementation. Testing is done. So literally, again, four weeks, I would say, is the average. We've done it in two weeks for the integration. Why am I tying well, into that? Because again, when we start looking at some of our stories and success stories, um, most recently, we onboarded an organization called Synchrony Financial. Just, and I assume some of you are familiar with that. Goodness knows mm -hmm. they have a lot of uh, credit cards in market that they manage, including Sam's Club and others. Um, but, you know, this has gone from sympathy, get well, new baby, floral and holiday uh, to a, a market where literally last week, we had 6,000 employees who had to receive a $30 gift and tie in our technologies, a smart gift uh, to effectively provide that, display that, provide the employee the option to accept the gift and then to deliver the gift in a timely fashion. Um, why does a company like Synchrony do this? Because people aren't running around trying to find inventory, trying to purchase, products on their own outside of a program. And really what we're talking about, it lowers the cost of people, right? Of course, there's a discount structure. Of course, we do those things that are necessary. But again, when we look at our costs and the cost that you're going to extend, we're here to make it as effective and as efficient as possible. Um, and really when we look at it, the greatest cost that we have as a business, which is your cost and my cost, is about errors. Um, quite frequently, if we look at the error ratio within 1-800-Flowers and just the flowers brands, there's roughly 1.5% of the transactions that flow through our system will end up having an error. That error could be a wrong address. That error could be a wrong delivery location, wrong product selected, et cetera, et cetera. So literally half of our errors, so now we're at 0.75% of the errors, in the floral business are due to our customers who are having issues or challenges entering an order. Through punch out, what we've seen is an incredible improvement in that to less than a half of 1% of an error rate because we're really helping that end user go through the ordering process, Kevin. So if it's going to a funeral home as an example, prompting them to identify who the deceased is, prompting them to identify all the necessary information with delivery information on the journey to ensure that there are a minimal of errors that ensure timely delivery. And and pretty much all that is done through that one experience, right? So that you're you're enabling them to do that through a punch out and the additional programs and you're not taking them into 17 different directions and you're not having them the phone or call up someone. This is all done rather seamlessly. Uh, not only is it done seamlessly, but when we look at the business overall, um, it really is about being as efficient and as effective as possible, right? Which is why this is a true multi-brand solution. All of our brands are represented uh, because even with something as simple as sympathy, Kevin, there are different cultures that don't need flowers and don't wish to have flowers sent. And it might be a gift basket, a fruit basket. It might be a kosher basket, right? It might be something that we are here to enable and make it as simple as possible for our user community to do what they need to do. And then on the back end, I have a complete customer service team that can help a client through the journey. Right. And and yes, that does mean a phone call often or an email, but the reality is, is we want it to be right and right the first time and every time. Great. Makes sense. Makes sense. So if I can back you up for a second, you talked about, you know, an implementation kind of answer that question that was in there and it brought to mind. So I, I at a Coupa conference a couple of years ago, you shared with me kind of your requirements for who needs to come to the table whenever you're doing an implementation. And I thought it was unique because you set a, a specific 
role and responsibility within each of the organization. And that's kind of helps dictate success. Can you kind of unpack that a little bit? Yeah, no, that's a, that, that's a great question, right? Because it, again, in our business and in our market and what we provide in what we would call e-procurement, there are really three, we can even say four, but there are uh, really four areas of, of focus for us to have a successful implementation program, right? And often we will get the e-procurement specialist who engages and begins that implementation process. But if we haven't engaged with the HR organization that's doing lifetime events at work, doing birthday programs and helping them through the journey, we're missing out, right? And we're leaving it to hap haphazard uh, chance that someone will click on the buy from 1-800-Flowers supplier. Sales, right? Believe it or not, sales is one of the largest engagement strategies and customer appreciation during holiday. We've got to be able to speak to sales leadership. And when we do speak to sales leadership, as an example, we have a program going on right now with a company called Microsoft, who you're familiar with, <laughs> um, that literally is a sales engagement program for appreciation, right? So these things become the important checkpoints that when we go through an integration, not only is it the technical portion of it, but we want to make sure we have the communications open and we're achieving the goal of getting sales involved, HR involved, marketing and events, because realize many of our products are also event driven, where we will help. Again, large event is happening. I'm doing Trade Centric is hosting an event in Dallas, Texas, or in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and very simple things like normally, if anybody has attended an event, right, an offsite event, you'll end up checking in and registering at the event uh, and they'll give you an extra backpack to, to carry along. Well, the benefit is, is by leveraging our technologies and smart gift, why not do this ahead of time? Let the individual be involved in the gifting process. So when they do come to the event, they are wearing or using the trade centric backpack, right? Rather than carrying their traditional, what do I have here? I have a Swiss, a Swiss gear backpack, right? And I would come with my trade centric backpack. So these are the little things that we do, engaging with the events team, engaging with procurement, obviously, uh, but HR and sales leadership. That's great. So that's that's helpful. And I, I think mm -hmm. just being able to think about it in that way, right, of who's required to make a program successful, there has to be some, like, I guess, KPIs or some measurements that that you can show or at least talk a little bit about like what the impact has been to offering when you have these individuals all together and could you share any of that or i mean i don't want you to give specific numbers but maybe ballpark what have you seen no, I, I, that's a, that, that's a great question right i think <clears throat> the best way that i can describe it in in a corporation whether i like it or not five percent of a workforce is going to have a lifetime event of work right Someone's going to go to the hospital. Someone's going to have something happen that's going to trigger, right, this event of, oh, I need to send flowers. Um, but by engaging with these other groups, what we start seeing in our KPIs and, and really our measurements, of course, they're revenue to me. Um, but outside of me, it's about creating greater satisfaction along the path of multiple users in the community that not only provide a customer engagement portion, but the actual redeemer or the employee has the ability to give feedback back to that HR organization, back to that sales organization through our technologies, which helps substantiate the value of a program, right? Our lifetime value of a customer today is approximately for the business or enterprise business clients is over 10 years. It's actually closer to 14 to give you an idea. And that's really about execution each and every day. And the more we execute, the more we're given the opportunity to ex execute, the greater satisfaction we'll end up driving within an organization. That's that's amazing. So, I mean, 14 years, right? Like who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want to be able to, to stake that claim to say that, you know, they keep coming back. I, I keep surprised. I like the, like the, the, the title of the, the session, surprising and delighting them so much that they keep coming back.
Well, we work hard together on that. It's not just us, right? We don't expect the customer to keep coming back, right? We have to be actively involved in that process, but why they keep coming back is we satisfy the customer each and every time. That's great. So I want to come back to something else that you you brought and talked about earlier, and that's around the whole P card and credit card expenses. And, sure. and I just want to talk a little bit more of like when you're talking about making it easy for the customers, do you, do you go into any more details with them about why they don't want to order on a credit card? And do you make that as part of your, your, your sales and, or your pitch? Um, it can be depending on the audience, right? I think that it really does become if we're helping someone to understand and justify, right? How How is this indirect spend, right? Which actually ties into the question that's up there about are there additional benefits that come with automation and automating this process? Um, you know, quite frequently until you get to accounts payable, it's not promoted and advertised that, every time I do an expense, it's $52. That's the cost of the company. And why is that cost there? Because someone has to review it, someone has to approve it. You have to go into your e-certify or concur to go through these processes. Literally takes you 30 minutes. It takes another hour for the entire process to go through. So first and foremost, when we look at how do we help position, it's about understanding where the pains are, Kevin, right? We have to be able to, every customer is unique, right? Mm -hmm. I would love to say that every client is a 400,000 employee organization. No, we have lots and lots of 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 employee organizations, which are much more tightly knit, but still have that same pain, right? There's five operations with five HR organizations that how do we help standardize? How do we help automate? which obviously leads into a cost benefit and savings to the, to our customer, but really it goes into the reporting and being able to financially show what's happening, where that spend is and how is it spent and ensuring compliance, right? If if the, the sympathy flowers have a hundred dollar limit and spend easy to do in a punch out and integration, um, right, often set up in your Coupa instance or whichever instance you're using. But the fact is, is coming back, reviewing that information with the customer, seeing where the outliers are, why those outliers exist uh, on a quarterly basis gives us better understanding, gives the client better understanding of where the gaps are. So it's, it's definitely, it's a true partnership then because you're looking out for other aspects of their business, not just trying to get their business. Get, getting their business is really the simplest part, right? As as we know, uh, th that's where the work starts, right? As as I often will tell my own organization and my sales organization, just because you get a PO or because you get a contract, all that means is that's the start of the work to happen, right? Mm -hmm. We know, um, just like all of us know in our businesses, that it's that level of effort to to continuity that becomes critical to the success. Okay, awesome. So I want to transition now. We've talked about like your your capabilities from an integration side. Let's talk about Smart Gift because we keep alluding to it, and I got a chance to see Smart Gift in action. I like to say that it's amazing. I was really excited that your team reached out and was able to to take me through a demo. Um, I just love how companies like yours are thinking outside the box to deliver solutions for e-procurement platforms, whether it's been punch out, whether it's a, some other application, but you're looking out for your B2B customers. So I'm gonna give you some time to kind of, you know, shout from the rooftops. Let's talk about this new technology. <laughs> it, it is by far the technology we're most proud of today. And again, like it or not, yes, we have 12 brands, we have product, but like everyone else, data and technology is what drives us, right? Deep down, everything that we do focuses on technology and the ability to execute. Um, really, if we look at Smart Gift, which was a independent organization that we acquired, um, they were a retail strategy of, of helping large retailers in their gifting strategies and components. At COVID, so literally, if we look at 2020, when employees start working remotely, 
um, not knowing where employees were located, the customer would come to us and say, how do I do this, right? Last year, I would send 100 gifts out to my employees. I had all their addresses. Don't have it anymore. How can you help me with this process? Um, so we partnered with the Smart Gift Organization. We ended up acquiring them 15 months ago. Uh, actually, it's 18 months ago already. Um, and really start delivering the tools to assist in automating all of the process of gifting with security, right? A again, so much of what we do revolves around security. And when we're talking about literally addressless gifting, leveraging an email, leveraging a link through Slack or leveraging a link through Teams, right? Providing the ability for clients to send one gift out, send out 100 gifts, 10,000 gifts uh, within minutes, uh, really, again, with a portfolio of brands tying into what we would call empowering the user of choice. So frequently over the course of years in the gifting business, someone will send a gift box and I've received gift boxes. So others have received gift baskets. And um, whether I'm kosher, I have a nut allergy, whether I'm chocolate allergy, whether I'm, uh, again, inclined not to accept carbohydrate gifts or uh, gluten-free, the idea and mm -hmm. strategy is Literally, we help our clients develop a gifting process, automate that, that ties into the element of choice with Smart Gift. Don't need a physical address, which again, you guys will all experience. We'll talk about it. Um, great, as simple as a QR code at events, but really it's a great way to send out a large scale. We talked about synchrony a little bit um, during a holiday season. We will do... Uh, anywhere again from a, a small sales organization that wants to send out a hundred gifts to their clients up to the largest institutions that want to send out 10, 20,000 different gifts to their employees. And literally, Kevin, this is done within minutes. And then on the back end, not only is it important to do it, and it's easy to measure, there's analytics that are involved, but literally in two weeks, it will be tied into the Coupa platform so now I can truly do this within my, or I'm sorry, with the Trade Centric platform and Coupa and others that literally I will be able to send a smart gift out to 5,000 employees and have it effectively accounted for through the approval process. Awesome. Really, really cool. So did I hear two weeks? Two weeks. That, two weeks. Awesome. We uh, are, the, the date, it's actually... Um, I'm giving myself an extra day. We're expecting the 29th will be the go live date. We'll call it Halloween. We'll celebrate on Halloween. Right. Smart gifting live punch out. That's great. That's great. Congratulations. So I can say that I got to take advantage of smart gift, not in punch out, but just the rest of the features of smart gift. And um, selfishly, I I had a, to to satisfy a guilty pleasure. And I went with Cheryl's cookies because, you know, each day in the afternoon, I, I needed a treat. So I took advantage of the smart gift and picked my own personal <laughs> one. Um, but, you know, I, I want to just ask you something. You know, I mentioned it at the top. And since we've come to the to the end of the the, the this portion of it, before we get to Q&A, Carrie, I want to know, what is your brand? What is your go-to brand in 1-800-Flowers? What is your guilty pleasure brand? Uh, okay, there's there's a difference, right? There's there's a go-to brand and there's a guilty pleasure brand. So let let's let's understand that. Um, I will be selfish, right? So I'm not going to give you the stock answer. All of our brands are are, are terrific. Mm -hmm. um, the guilty pleasure is absolutely chocolate covered strawberries. By by my default, chocolate covered strawberries, as well as there's a a cheesecake portion of the cheesecake bites. That's my personal guilty pleasure, right? So whenever, and and we use Smart Gift for our employees on their birthdays and other events, when it's my birthday, take a guess what I'm selecting. The chocolate covered strawberries, which are delivered locally um, by one of our fruit providers, along with, yes, cheesecake bites. So that's my selfish one. Um, personally, I think, you know, the, the other selfishness look, 
the quality control that we have with our food brands. And one of the things we're incredibly proud of, Kevin, is this is our supply chain, right? So when we look at gifting, the gifting is done through our supply chain, whether it's personalization law, whether it's Harry and David, whether it's Moose Munch. And what that eliminates is not only inventory issues, but it's really about quality control of the product. And yes, there will be instances and cases, I'd be foolish to say everything is perfect. It's not going to be perfect. But the difference is, is when something does go wrong as an organization, it's how quickly do you react to what to rectify the situation. And all of us have been in situations where something didn't work. Um, so I look at our brands, Harry and David, I look at our brands, Personalization Mall, Sherry's Berries, Popcorn Factory, all of them are great brands, but more important, if something doesn't meet the satisfaction of a user, we replace it, no questions asked. And that's part of our guarantee uh, of what we offer for our customers at any level. Love it. That is that is a perfect way to close this portion. Carrie, I, I can't thank you enough for uh, joining me today. Uh, before we uh, close it. We're going to turn it over to Amanda to open up the Q&A section because I believe we have seen some questions come in. So Amanda, take it away. Thanks, Kevin. Yes, we do have several questions from the audience. But before I do that, I would like to let you all know that as a token of appreciation, 1-800-Flowers would like to offer attendees a special thank you gift through the Smart Gift platform, which we just covered. Uh, be sure to check your email for more information on that. All right, so let's hop into some questions. The first question that we have from the audience is, how do you see the future of employee gifting evolving, especially as many companies are remote or hybrid now? I, I think that's a great question. So, you know, the interesting thing in the evolution is if we look at the history, the evolution goes normal course of action of gifting, COVID hits, which literally drives that requirement uh, to support hybrid organizations to provide a solution for the for the remote workforce. The whole idea behind Smart Gift is really to help express and connect with those individuals who are remote or hybrid. We have not seen, we have not skipped a beat. Yes, there are organizations who are certainly spending less but there are other organizations who are spending more. So from my perspective, it's how can we support an organization that does have a hybrid workforce that we're helping you identify what the appropriate solution is to address it. Awesome. All right, we have another question. How effective is Punch-Out alone in managing indirect spend? Are there any additional benefits that come with automating POs and invoices too? So I think I hit on uh, part of this and Kevin and I through our Q&A have, have hit on this. Um, so when I look at what are, what are the other areas that you look at, it's really about encompassing and inclusive of all employees being able to leverage and take advantage of a standard process within an organization, right? So yes, we have the spend management. Yes, we have the tools. Yes, we have the ability for integration and implementation of requirements within a business, uh, but just as important is now employees who can have access to these technologies and platforms can do it, do it through a standardized negotiated uh, client like 1-800-Flowers to effectively support you throughout the United States. Floral, we can do all over the globe. And, and I would add to that, right? So that you think about punch out and that's getting everybody touching your site and seeing you. The, the, the benefits, and I talked about this earlier in purchase order automation and invoice automation is the downstream and the back office piece of it. And that's where you spend a lot of time and effort and resources trying to either enter information track down or resolve information. So there's a lot of benefits in the purchase order and invoice automation, you know, that organizations aren't always looking at because they just think that punch out is front and center, 
but there's a lot of value in, in, in including all three when you're doing an integration. Great. All right, we've got another question. I like this one. Uh, with integration, is the process similar ordering through my procurement software with you over going through your platform directly? Great, great question. That's a terrific question. So how we built our technologies and what we call punch out is you're literally going in through an instance, right, through iframe or however it might be within the organization that you're literally going live into our platform, right? We're not looking at an EDI model or coming into our system. It's going to take all of the requirements of your business, the approvals, um, right? The automated cost centers and POs that get assigned to it, that literally within milliseconds, your request for that order with your information automatically transfers electronically to your e-procurement system automated approvals literally will happen again within milliseconds. So um, that order, whether it's again, a sympathy order for floral or it's a thank you box or get well box, those are literally sent to the distribution facilities or the florists within seconds, right? So that's how quickly it's happening. Um, but yes, you are coming into our live site, which ensures Inventory is being presented to you and how inventory is being presented to you is very simple. If there is inventory based on your request, we're grabbing that inventory immediately. If you're looking for a product and there is no inventory, you'll never see it in the platform. That's nice. Great. Great feature. All right, next question. Uh, what advice would you give to other companies who are considering offering integration capabilities? Um, I'm not quite sure what the context of that question is, but you know, if you're if you're looking at integrating or you're a service organization that's trying to drive integration capabilities in an organization, I think you have to start doing a cost justification because invariably, whether we like it or not, the CFO suite or finance is going to get involved. They're they're absolutely going to drive, show me the ROI, show me why this works. We can help our customers through that process with 1-800-Flowers, uh, but justifying why to go through a complete integration. We'll do our end, we'll do it based on spend, we'll do it based on employees, we'll help substantiate it and show proof of what the feedback is from our clients and what you're going to expect feedback with. the best way I can answer. That's a great answer. I, I, I think it, there's a lot of considerations that, that go into choosing integration. And I mean, just to selfishly uh, promote us, we actually do something called the trading partner analysis to even help with that, right? So right. if you're thinking about, is this the right space for me to be in? Do my customers really purchase this way? If you didn't do the research, or maybe your sales teams aren't telling you that, we also can help with that as well. So um, I think just to piggyback on that, Carrie, that, that would be helpful. Right. All right, we've got a few more questions. Does Smart Gift show a price point to the recipient? So the recipient, absolutely not. The price point is uh, created by what we would call the gifter, not the giftee, right? Um, the gifter is going to use his or her budget in order to do it. The giftee has no idea what the value of that gift is. All right. And next question, is there an automation feature in the platform for birthdays or anniversaries? There is, um, at least in this market platform, the answer is yes. We have a complete automations profile that allow you to, there's, there's two aspects of it, right? If you're looking for us to build an integration into your HRMS platform, we can do that and entirely automate the entire process. Or again, we can take uploaded lists and be able to manage it based on that birthday and send it out based on your criteria, right? So some organizations like to send out a birthday gift at the beginning of the month. Some like to send it out three days before the birthday. Some like to do it the day of the birthday. All of that can be automated within our technologies. All right, next question. Thanks, Gary, for that. Does it cost anything to use SmartGift? You have to be our client. 
So the answer is no, we don't charge for the service. So one of the benefits, just to add to that, Amanda, right? One of the benefits is because we own our supply chain, I don't need to charge a subscription fee in order to make this work, right? Um, and it's a critically important component. So we took the position and continue to maintain that position that we do not charge subscription fees for what we do. Thanks, Carrie, for that. All right, we have one more question from the audience. If a recipient does not pick a gift, do we still get charged for it? You only pay for what's redeemed. So the answer is no, we will not charge you. We will give you an estimate on front. So if you're thinking about it from a PO to be generated um, with within Trade Centric or your punch out model, yeah, you might have a purchase order for a blanket PO or the purchase order gets generated for $10,000. Let's say it's right 150 employees with a $75 gift or a $66 gift uh, on average. But the final PO would close with the invoice based on the number of individuals who've actually redeemed the gift. And, and I think that's an important point, right? Because when you talk about closing the loop and sending the invoice, you're you're not invoicing right away on that purchase order. You're waiting right. and invoicing at intervals, right? Based on right. as the gifts are um, accepted. Correct. And and really with programs, right, that we're dealing with a punch out PO because the PO will be issued right in advance, right, prior to the actual going live of the event so it can be done. Uh, typically, we will end up generating the invoice at the close of the actual event, right? So if the last date of acceptance is October 31st, we'll close this out November 1st. And that's where the invoice generation process will begin coming. Okay, we have a few more questions that have come in. Uh, somebody asked uh, if we will we'll be providing a link to the recording of today's session. Yes, we will. Be sure to check your inbox later today. We'll send out an email with a link to view the session on demand. Uh, another question we have is, is there a way to include a PO line in the order? Um, so I'm not quite sure where, where the question is driven from, because if we look at the general punch out model, the POs are automatically generated through the e-procurement platform. Um, if it's not through an e-procurement platform, yes, that can be done and could be locked down in our systems to require a purchase order to be available. So if if I can, I, I want to I want to elaborate a little bit more from what I interpret there. So PL line line number, I'm assuming maybe when they're referencing that, maybe they're cutting a purchase order for two different types of gifts that they want their associates to claim. When you invoice back, do you invoice back each individual line for the different gifts claimed, or do you just invoice back one? Here's what the amount was for all smart gifts. Great, great question. So we typically provide one invoice with a detailed backup of every single claim and transaction in order that fell behind it, Kevin. Okay, that's helpful. All right, so that is uh, all of our questions. Uh, thank you, Kevin and Carrie, for your insights. It was a great discussion. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Uh, if you'd like to discuss more, feel free to connect with our panelists on LinkedIn. I've dropped the links to their profiles in the chat, so be sure to reach out to them and connect with them there. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, Thanks everyone, and thanks, Amanda. Appreciate it. Thanks.